Let's go live now to Melbourne. That's where we find Resources Minister Matt Canavan this morning. Matt Canavan, thanks so much for your time. First of all, can I ask you about this story? George Columbaris underpaid workers. It was about $7 million in wages. He was fined $200,000. Do you think that meets community expectations? Well, look, uh, Laura, uh, in the last term of Parliament, uh, the government did strengthen the laws around this area uh, through the introduction of a Vulnerable Workers Act. That was uh, in response to issues around 7-Eleven and they, them underpaying staff. Now, obviously, the application of any laws matter for the Fair Work uh, Commission and Ombudsman. Uh, uh, I know that the, uh, the Attorney-General has already said in response to this particular issue that He's happy to look at potentially tougher penalties, criminal penalties if necessary. Uh, but look, I can't comment on any individual case. I haven't, apart from the reports here this morning, know the details of this one. But the government has strengthened laws in this regard in the last term of parliament. We remain ready to do more if we have to. Yeah, the government is about to move an insurance integrity uh, bill for the unions uh, next week when parliament returns. So we need something like that for business. Well, as I say, we've already done that last term of Parliament, strengthening the laws there, and, and we remain ready to do more. This is completely unacceptable, uh, of course, uh, this kind of uh, conduct. Uh, it has been... Uh, uh, so Behaviour of this type of conduct has been exposed uh, in the last few years, and we've taken action uh, in response to it, and we'll remain ready to do what we have to do to make sure people comply with the law. Can I ask you about the front page of The Australian now? A former High Court judge has said about the, the voice to Parliament that it can actually be done through legislation. Rather than changing the Constitution, there would need minimal changes. Is that an attractive alternative to you? Well, well look, Laura, I think what's important here is, is what Ken White is trying to achieve, and that is uh, to, to, to get together, get people together and get behind a consensus option. Uh, that is the right thing to do here. We must ensure that uh, um, any recognition of Indigenous Australians in the Constitution uh, or any uh, progression of, of the sentiments that have been brought forward in the last few years through the earlier statement uh, are done in a way which unifies the country. Uh, the worst thing we could do with this issue is to try to make it divisive. Uh, it must be a uniting uh, change. Uh, and that's why we just need to, to all... Well, I'm taking a breath and let's, let's let Ken White, the Minister, try and find that consensus option. I'm not going to be here on your show putting up red lines saying what I'd do if I were the Minister. Yeah. That's not going to be helpful. Uh, let's try and unite Australians around this because uh, it is great that we're talking a lot more about what, we can, what we're doing for Indigenous Australians, uh, what we can do to make, make their lives better. Uh, and, yes, we were always committed to trying to find a solution to, to recognise Indigenous Australians in the Constitution, but it must be one that unites us. So could there be a voice without a third chamber? Well, look, as I say, I'm not, I'm not going to get into the details here and make Ken's job any harder, Laura. I mean, it's a tough... Yeah. He's got a tough gig. Uh, there's, there's obviously very passionate views about this uh, uh, from, from lots of uh, uh, um, individuals involved. Um, so let, let, I, I, I want the result, not, not so the process. Let's let Ken, Ken take that forward. Certainly is a, a tough job uniting Indigenous leaders as well as political parties yeah. and then yeah. uh, getting Australians on board with that as well. Let's look at the bush summit that you were at, at yesterday. There have been some complaints that a lot of the conversation was around future-proofing farmers for, for future events when a lot of them are still struggling now. Is that fair? Oh, look, I, well, I, I'm not going to um, say if something's fair or unfair from people's comments. People are welcome to their views. Uh, I mean, the federal government, we have, of course, provided a lot of assistance through this drought. Uh, over a billion dollars has been uh, provided through, through direct grants and payments and, and concessional loans. Um, we've remained ready to, to, to change that and alter that as we've needed to do as the drought worsened. We did last year by relaxing some of the... Uh, uh, some of the requirements, mm. some of the eligibility requirements for, for such assistance. Uh, yesterday, the Prime Minister announced more funding for uh, soil, uh, getting our soils healthy, make sure we can uh, um, be ready ready there. Uh, and it's, it's, Look, I thought the summer was very positive too. Laura's there and, uh, yes, it's very tough at the moment in many parts of New South Wales and Queensland that remain affected by drought, uh, but there is a positive future for regional Australia. And, uh, I think one thing that really came out of it is we'd love the media... Uh, to, to focus more on those positive stories about what's going on because we want to attract people to the bush, uh, we want to attract people into farming. I am confident we're going to hit a $100 billion farming industry. Yeah. 
uh, in the next few decades and, and, uh, and we've also got huge amounts of mining and resources projects going on as well. So there's so much opportunity in the regional Australia uh, and the best thing about the summit yesterday was getting the nation's, one of the nation's major newspapers uh, focused on that, highlighting that and selling that to the rest of the country. Yes, so kudos to the Daily Telegraph and put Dubbo Zoo on your list. Very good advice, Matt Canavan. Now, yeah. what can you do now about the land clearing laws in Queensland? Farmers have made a series of complaints about this. Um, you're slating it back to the state government, but is there anything you can do other than complain loudly about it? Well, just to, just to let your viewers know the situation here, last year we had these massive bushfires in Queensland and they hit my, my area of the country, around Rockhampton, uh, very badly. Uh, a lot of farmers lost huge amounts of uh, grazing land as a result of the fires. Um, straight away, I was, I was down at evacuation centres in the, in the aftermath of the fires and everyone was complaining about the restrictive and confusing laws around uh, vegetation management in Queensland, to put in fire breaks, to do cool burns, these types of things. Uh, eventually the Queensland Government did do a review, that review came out this week and said the Queensland Government should reassess their own laws in this regard. They backed that report, backed the concerns of farmers and landowners in Queensland and in response the Queensland Government has decided to establish a hotline where farmers can call up can and find out what the laws are. Well look these are Queensland laws Laura, they're not not things that the federal government has the power to, to regulate. Right, so they you are, are pretty powerless laws. to do anything but, but, other than but, put pressure but, on the Queensland well, government. Well, obviously, there's an election next year in Queensland, Laura, <laughs> and I'll, if, uh, if there's not action on this, I'll be out there saying very clearly the LNP are open to, to making changes here. Uh, we're not tired, we're not super glued to the Greens like the Labor Party are. Uh, that's why they're not taking action here. It's just common sense that you should be allowed to reduce fuel on your own property okay. Uh, to reduce overall risk. This is a public good because we want to encourage people to do the cool burns and put in the fire breaks because by doing so they benefit neighbouring landowners too and these, these confusing and restrictive laws prevent public goods occurring. Just quickly, should new start be increased? Uh, look, I, I said last year that when, when we have the means to do so, when the budget is in, in a degree of strong position, that, that we should look at doing that. Obviously it's very difficult for anyone okay. uh, to live on, on Newstar's currently form, notwithstanding that many get additional payments on top of that. Uh, but, uh, but look, uh, we've still got to get that budget back into surplus. Uh, this is a surplus year, but you know, we, let's, let's, uh, let's make sure it happens first, Laura, and then we can have the means to do other things. All right, well, I'm sure we'll talk plenty of times between now and then and after. Matt Canavan, appreciate your time this morning. Now, Rose Laura, have a good day.